Hi, I'm Hannah, and I'm gonna tell you about my favorite topic, crypto and e-commerce. I'm gonna to attempt to convince you in the next few minutes that cryptocurrencies are going to do amazing things for e-commerce. First, I'll explain how cryptocurrencies enable whole new e-commerce markets that otherwise would never have existed. And second, I'll tell you why cryptocurrencies are dramatically better than the technology that we're currently using, credit cards. So on point number one, crypto enables new markets. And to explain this, I'm going to use as an example one of my favorite crypto projects, OpenBazaar. OpenBazaar is an open source project that creates a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. The joke is that OpenBazaar is what you would get if eBay and BitTorrent had a baby. So OpenBazaar is an eBay only as a peer-to-peer -peer protocol rather than as a company. Now, when I'm rambling on to friends about how amazing OpenBazaar is, I often hear, eh, I have an Amazon Prime account. What do I need that for? And yeah, Amazon Prime is amazing. But you see, crypto markets like OpenBazaar aren't just about the e-commerce that is currently happening. They're about the e-commerce that otherwise never would happen. For example, let's suppose that you enjoy collecting artwork from around the world. So you're looking for a new piece of art on the interwebs and you find a fantastic piece of art made by an artist that lives in a village just outside Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea. It's offered for sale by a small businessman based out of Port Moresby and he has a website that says, hey, just send me a money wire and I'll ship you this fantastic piece of art from the village down the road to me. Now, do you think you're gonna do that? Probably not. And that's because you have no recourse if something goes wrong. What if the artwork never arrives? Or what if instead of a four foot wood carving, you get a one foot plastic figurine? Who do you call? Are you gonna go fly to Papua New Guinea and take the guy to small claims court? Probably not. And for this reason, there are millions, maybe billions of people on the planet who we don't do business with because we don't share any third party intermediaries with them. You see, when you buy something on eBay, you're interacting with a stranger, but if something goes wrong, eBay will help you sort it out. You see, we always have these big third party intermediaries in our transactions, whether that's eBay or your credit card company or PayPal, etc. But crypto projects like OpenBazaar, they change this. The OpenBazaar platform has distributed resolution systems built into it. OpenBazaar has what they call moderators who act as intermediaries. But this isn't one big intermediary, it's an entire market for intermediaries. I like to think of OpenBazaar as creating a kind of global distributed small claims court. So how does this work? It works with multi-sig transactions. You see, you can think of cryptocurrency as programmable money. You can do things with it that you just could never do with regular cash. And what this multi-sig functionality enables is for two parties to place funds into a kind of escrow, where if there is a dispute, the moderator can step in and make a decision. So cryptocurrency, or programmable money, enables features like multi-sig, which enables escrow and dispute resolution services, which enable you to transact with people that you maybe never would have considered as possible business partners. And this is just one of the ways that crypto can enable new markets. But if you're not yet convinced by the awesome things that crypto can do, then let's look at it from another angle. And I'll explain to you why our current e-commerce payment technology, credit cards, well, I'll be nice and I'll just say that credit cards are a bit outdated. You see, credit cards are a 50-year-old technology that was built for in-person transactions. Credit cards are pull rather than push. And what that means is that once someone has your credit card info, they can pull funds out of your account whenever they like. <laughs> well, crypto is much more like cash. It's a push system. So unless you're being mugged, no one can pull cash out of your wallet. You need to hand it over. And you don't have to hand over control of all your funds in order to make a payment. With crypto, the data that you give a merchant to pay them in no way enables them to pull further funds from your account. And this has big implications. 
there's this thing called PCI DSS, or Payment Card Industry Data Security Standards. You see, when you're a merchant that accepts credit cards, you wind up with the database full of credit card info that hackers would love to get their hands on. You have to put quite a lot of effort into protecting that data. And generally, that data creates such a prize for hackers that it's only a matter of time before there will be a large data theft. In 2017, nearly 16 billion US dollars was lost to online identity theft and credit card fraud in the US alone. That's a big problem. Now, crypto isn't perfect. It comes with its own brand of concerns. But if we were all using crypto instead of credit cards, well, things like PCI compliance, credit card fraud, the huge merchant server hacks, all of that would go away. So are you convinced now? If not, I have two more quick points. You see, cryptocurrencies are global. You can use them anywhere in the world, so it's great for international commerce. You don't have to deal with wire transfer fees and exchange rate fees. Cryptocurrencies are also permissionless and censorship resistant. So if you have a business that's not politically popular, like maybe a marijuana dispensary, you might find yourself unable to get a bank account. But you can still use crypto because the political approval of a banking CEO is not required to use crypto. So crypto is pretty awesome for e-commerce, right? Well, I hope I've convinced you, but I'll see you next time.